Awesome. Thank you, Oliver. Um, hopefully uh, everyone can see the, the presentation. I think the slides are up. Yeah. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, you gave us a, a, a great introduction. Hopefully we can, we can live up to it today. Um, but yeah, so my name is uh, Kevin Glisson. And my team member here is Mark Van We're both on the security and response, response team here at Netflix. And today we're going to talk through um, a piece of orchestration we built to help us manage incidents here at Netflix. So um, I don't know how everyone here feels, but I know personally before incidents, you know, this is very near and dear to my heart, right? Everything feels like it's going fine, but you know, in the back of your head, you have a little bit of anxiety. You, you know that at any moment something goes terribly wrong. In this case, we have the classic kind of clip of a Ferris Bueller's day off, you know, very easy to, um, things could go catastrophic very easily, right? And then, once you discover that you do have an incident, uh, this is also the kind of feeling that is invoked in myself, right? So you see something is on fire, you know, you, you start to kind of take a look at it. Um, you, you try to try to do some analysis on it, but you're very much, um, you know, a little bit high levels of stress, high levels of ambiguity during an incident. And then lastly, after an incident, you know, it takes a lot out of you uh, emotionally and, 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 and physically, right? We, we, we heard in the last uh, presentation that, you know, they were very concerned about uh, burning out their, their folks in those initial days, right? So it's, it's very important for us, at least, to be cognizant of that for not only of our own team, but also of the, the organization as a whole, right? Um, we want to be effective, and we need uh, members throughout the organization to, to, to be effective. And then lastly, how do you, how a lot of people feel about uh, automation response? Um, automation is great. Uh, oftentimes, though, we see that it's trying to solve maybe the wrong problem. Um, and for us, we don't expect to solve instant response through automation. Our ultimate goal here is to help people collaborate more effectively um, during and after an incident and give them tools and data to make effective decisions um, to help us resolve those incidents. So that leads us to the next question is, how do we, how do, we do that? How do we... Uh, uh, try to automate some of those things. And with us, uh, we developed a dispatch. So what is dispatch? Um, for us, it's, it's an orchestration system. Uh, it helps us manage security incidents. It integrates with, with existing tools throughout the organization. We, we don't expect uh, the vast majority of users to even know what dispatch is, and that's the way we prefer it. it, it for us, it should really be in the background, tying together tooling that your organization uses day to day and they're familiar with and helps them to use those, those tools that are used for maybe other businesses processes to effectively respond to security incidents. So what are some of our goals with um, automation? Uh, our first goal is, is we're very, um, you know, one of our main theses for, uh, for effective incident response is that people resolve incidents and we need to get the right people in the room. We need to get them engaged. Uh, we need to be active communicating with us and we need to get them oriented quickly. So for us, that means when someone's, uh, we, we tag them in an incident, um, you know, they're asking questions of like, okay, does there a run book for this? Uh, who else do I need from my team or from other teams to, to, to be brought into this incident? Are there additional stakeholders that need to be notified about this picker incident? Is, is there someone, uh, a partner maybe, or, or someone else? Uh, in my sphere that, that needs to be notified. Um, and then where can I get information about this specific incident about what's, what's happening? Like, what, what, what is the, the subject of this particular incident? And, and moreover, what's already been done? Am I coming into this halfway through? Am I right at the beginning? Do we know, what do we know? So our first goal is to get people engaged and oriented um, quickly. Uh, the second is that we found that uh, context switching between a lot of different systems is hard. Right. Um, you know, it's not really there's a lot of accounting and, and data entry that, you know, is, is kind of part and parcel with instant response, but it's not really uh, effective for instant responders to jump through a lot of different interfaces, a lot of different ticketing systems and so on and so forth. And so we really um, push to centralize a lot of that uh, incident um, life cycle, the management of it to one one particular place so that folks, you know, don't have to constantly be be flipping through a million tabs and, and copying and pasting data from one system to the other. 
So we focus a lot on reducing the number of interfaces uh, that people have to uh, interact with and enter data into. Um, we also want to offer a consistent experience, right? Um, ideally, you know, there, we are a team. We are going to have different people responding to different incidents. But the last thing we would we would want is for one incident to be run very differently from the other. We don't think that uh, we, we think that consistency um, provides people with a sense of um, you know trust in the system almost that they're going to be handled. This is going to be handled appropriately and, and correctly, um, and it, it speeds up their ability to be oriented. Right? If we're always doing the same thing, we're always providing the same resources. Uh, those people start to learn that 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 process and kind of can uh, contribute more effectively, uh, more quickly. Although we push for an consistent experience, we also balance this against flexibility, right? So we do realize that every instant is, is unique in its own specific ways. And so we do balance this consistency against the ability to be flexible enough um, that the participant feels empowered that they can go and do additional things. So almost all of the features within dispatch are additive in nature. Um, hopefully providing kind of a base level experience, but then allowing participants to go above and beyond that um, when, is, when is necessary for the incident. And then the other opportunity we have a lot with um, automation is, is we're able to collect a lot of information that would be onerous uh, or impossible to collect for, for an individual, right? So there's a lot of data around who was added to an incident when, um, how long uh, someone spends time on certain things, all this information can be kind of collected um, by, by running it through some automation. And we can use that data to drive learnings uh, back into the organization. Um, we use this not only on a per incident basis, um, you know, so what went wrong, what was the root cause of this incident, but also on the aggregate basis. So if we can see that uh, we have certain trends throughout uh, all of our incidents, we can use that to hopefully drive uh, deeper and, and more um, uh, a bigger scoped uh, solutions throughout the organization. And with that, I'm gonna actually hand it off to my uh, team member, Mark, and he's gonna lead you through some of the actual features uh, of Dispatch itself. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I think you need to stop sharing so I can, okay, there you go. Let's see if I can find the right tab. Is it working? Can you see my slides? What about if I do this? Do I go back to the uh, presentation, present, presenter like view? Yeah, that has the presenter like view. Okay, yeah, I'll just uh, stick to this. Um, yeah, thanks again, Kevin. Um, so Kevin gave us a quick overview of like what we are trying to achieve with this patch. And now I'm gonna walk you through some of the um, features that we built in this patch, uh, features that this patch provides in uh, those kind of like categories. So the first one we're gonna kind of like cover is like orientation and engagement. It's a very important one. Um, so the, the way we allow, uh, we allow people to report incidents to us through this patch in different ways. But the main one is a very simple uh, web form. Uh, this web form allows people to uh, give us like uh, a title for that incident, a description. Uh, we also have uh, a concept of like project within this patch. So there's like different teams have like different projects with different like incident types and priorities. Uh, so when people go and report, they can choose from like a different like project, uh, different like incident type priority. They can also like specify tags um, on incident creation, if they want to already, if they already know like how they want to tag that incident and they want to use that later on for like filtering purposes. Um, we're always like trying to make it easy for people to report incident to us and uh, we use Slack at Netflix. So we also built a slash command 
that essentially like opens a model and allows people to essentially report an incident in the same way that we allow through the web. Um, <clears throat> once the incident is reported, all the resources are created. Uh, we start like adding people to the incident channel. And uh, once we add them to the incident channel, we also announce them. Uh, and that happens um, as the incident like progresses, like new people get added, we, we announce them to, to the channel. And the reason why we do this is because uh, it is important for other people already in the uh, incident to know like who's joining, uh, who they are, the team that they belong to, their location in case they need to be aware of, uh, you know, the time zone, right? Like we want to be uh, mindful about like where people are and like we don't want to bother them like off business hours if it's not necessary. And then also like the, the role that they have in that incident, is it like a participant, is the reporter, is the incident commander? Um, one thing that we decided to not include was, and you may have already noticed, is that the, the title that the person has at the company. And the reason why we uh, did this was because uh, oftentimes like people that um, are like higher up in the organization uh, tend to like, um influence decisions um and we don't want that to happen so we decided to not include the incident the the job this the the job title to like avoid these like power differential like issues we want the incident commander to be the one that makes the decisions based on the context and the, the information that is given to to them by other people participating in the incident um, another thing that Dispatch does uh, is allowing us to like manage roles. So we have like four different, uh, actually five different roles. Uh, we have like the incident commander, which is the person uh, that's responsible for like manage, managing the incident, like moving it forward uh, uh, towards like resolution, um, uh, uh, basically uh, having all the context about it. Uh, we also have like Scribe, which is uh, for like bigger incidents, like uh, kind of like a supporting role for the incident commander. So uh, like, like about like they have like with taking notes, keeping, um, you know, documentation up to date and all of those things. It's more like a supporting role for the incident commander when things like get big and the incident commander actually needs to, um, you know, have conversations with like different like incident participants and doesn't have time to like, take notes at the same time. So the scribe kind of like helps with that. And then we also have liaison. Uh, liaison helps us with, uh, again, like when an incident is like big or like it touches different parts of the organization, there's people that are better positioned to uh, kind of like liaise with those uh, other parts of the organization than the incident commander. The incident commander may not have a lot of insight into how that organization works, who to talk to. So uh, assigning someone the liaison role like helps us uh, kind of like take care of that. Uh, and then we have reporter, obviously the person that reported the incident that of almost never changes, right? And then we have like the regular participant uh, role, which is essentially like kind of like a subject matter expert at the company that can help us in a specific like area um, that, that we need to like uh, investigate or like resolve uh, an issue. Um, so these uh, kind of like feature also allows us to uh, basically do like a, an incident commander handoff if let's say like uh, the incident needs to be hand up, handed off to someone else. We can use this. Uh, once we use this to hand off the incident, uh, dispatch will communicate that in the channel so everyone knows like, okay, the new, new incident commander is like Kevin Glisson. Uh, we'll also change the, the channel topic and we'll make changes like in many other places so that gets like kind of like reflected. Um, one of the other things that dispatch allows us uh, is to kind of like get help from other people at the company. We have the ability to go and um, create uh, on-call services 
uh, within the system. And then those on-call services then are uh, available for people to use during incidents. So you don't have to remember like, oh, who is the on-call for like, um, you know, CERT? Um, I don't have to go to like a, you know, a third party system to see like, okay, uh, and, and do some searches there to like find who's the on-call. Like we can, uh, we, we register them, we create them uh, ahead of time, and then those are available uh, in this part and we can use them without having to know, like uh, do all those extra steps. Um, we also provide the ability to uh, pay it if necessary. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what we do on the communication side. So the first thing that an incident participant gets when they join uh, an incident or they get added to an incident is uh, what we call the welcome message. And uh, this welcome message provides like uh, information about the, the incident and the resources that were created for that incident such as the incident title, like the status of the incident, what type of incident it is, what is the priority, like do I need to like drop everything or can I just like work on the incident while I work on other things? Do I need to work over the weekend or not? Um, so we try to like um, um, provide that information to the participant as, uh, as they join. Uh, we also provide them with uh, who the incident commander is uh the investigation document which is like a collaboration document that we all use to like capture all the information uh, we uh, collect uh while we investigate the incident and many other like links to uh resources that uh get created and allow people to like collaborate and, and work on the incident so we um send this welcome message as an ephemeral channel ephemeral message to the incident channel so that message only uh, is received by the participant um, and then we also send it by email uh, some people um, um, if someone like is is not paying attention to slack uh, they'll get it by email as well so um, with that we hope that uh, we're kind of like reducing the amount of time that it takes for people to kind of like join us in the instant channel and a satellite contributing. Um, we also provide like two different types of uh, reporting within dispatch. We provide uh, the ability for uh, people to, or incident commanders to uh, write tactical reports and executive reports. Uh, tactical reports are more meant for people directly involved in resolving the incident. And so um, th these reports um, essentially give you kind of like a snapshot of like uh, where we are with the incident, like what the conditions, current conditions are, what are the actions that need to be taken. And if there are like any needs, um, um, any, anything that uh, the incident commander needs from uh, the incident participants to like move the incident forward. Um, this, um, uh, this tactical report gets uh, sent and pinned in the channel. So if, if someone like joins the incident channel, like kind of like at a later stage um, and, and they're not aware of like um, what has happened until that point, they can just go and uh, find all these like pinned uh, tactical reports and kind of like get up to speed on like uh, everything that has happened, everything that we've done. And so that kind of like frees the incident commander or like other people in the incident to like get them up to speed. And, and that's the idea, right? Like we, we just wanna make sure that uh, information is kind of like self-service here. Uh, we also send the, uh, the same way that the, we do it with the welcome email. We also do it with a tactical uh, report. We uh, send it by email because sometimes that's uh, easy for people to consume. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, lifecycle management, which is also very important. And like Kevin said, like we don't want uh, people to have to go to like multiple like systems to like uh, kind of like move the incident along. Um, so with that, we provide um, 
uh, two different ways to do it. Uh, we allow uh, people to do it from Slack, and we also allow people to do it from directly from the Dispatch Web UI. We don't have a screenshot of that here, but uh, this is kind of like the how the update incident like form looks like, and this allows us to like update information about the incident, like the title, description, type, priorities, the status. If we change the status from like active to stable, then everything gets moved to stable. It means like, hey, we already like contain the um, kind of like the the, the 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 incident. Like we've resolved uh, most of the questions we had. We we feel like in a pretty good we're in pretty good shape, so we can move it to stable. And then once we're like done with everything, including post incident review, if necessary, we can move it to close. And then dispatch uh, essentially will take all the actions necessary to like mark that incident as closed. And we also allow people to uh, update tags directly uh, here as well, if necessary. Um, one of the other things that Dispatch provides is uh, insights into uh, like incidents that we've had. And um, that's uh, really important for us because we also we are kind of like a learning organization. So like we always like try to learn from things that have happened in the past. So we collect a lot of information of incidents and we can like drive a lot of like interesting insights. And here's a screenshot of like the like kind of like the main dashboard that Dispatch provides. You can see like uh, total of number of like incidents, like how much uh, those incidents have cost uh, the um, the organization, what the average cost per incident is, how much time we spend um, um, managing an incident, and then uh, charts uh, showing like the different types of uh, incidents that we've managed, the, the priorities they have. So essentially we try to like, uh, we collect all this information and then we try to present it in a way that's easy to consume. It's easy to share with other people within the organization and, and that allows them and us to kind of like make more like informed decisions on like, okay, uh, looks like we're having like, um, you know, this quarter we had a lot of incidents of this type, like should we invest more like resources to make sure that uh, those doesn't happen or doesn't happen that often and so on and so forth. So we, we just try to like learn from what's happening and we're uh, kind of like trying to make like better decisions based on the data that we collect. Uh, another thing that Dispatch uh, provides that's pretty interesting is like we uh, provide like some sort of like uh, basic like forecasting. So you can see like uh, how many incidents you're gonna have compared to the incidents uh, yeah, and then you can compare that with uh, the incidents that you actually had. And um, you can like um, fine tune like the way you want this uh, forecast to work. And then back to Kevin uh, for him to like give us the uh, final key takeaways. We'll go through all these again. That was great, Mark. Thank you. Okay, so key takeaways. Um, you know, the we really want to get people involved uh, quickly and effectively. We think the folks that we get in the room are the ones um, are ultimately going to be able to help us resolve this information. We do this a lot of different ways. Um, dispatch does allow us to have um, basically business rules that and, and engage people automatically based on those rules, which is super helpful for us. I always forget to, you know, involve legal in certain situations or HR or so on and so forth. Oh. Yeah, we're on uh, presentation mode. Oh, sorry, my bad. Sorry, Brad, presenter mode. Let me switch. It Zoom doesn't tell you which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. There you go. Um, and we think that by engaging those folks uh, automatically is just another burden that the incident commander doesn't have to worry about, which we find really, really valuable. Uh, providing consistent customer experience. So everyone involved in our incidents, we consider a customer. We want to provide them a, a consistent experience. Uh, it reduces stress um, and it doesn't, it, it, and it ensures that we can actually learn from these organizations across incidents because we have a, a consistent experience and the data we collect is consistent as well. 
Uh, we allow uh, lifecycle management from the actual instant channel. Again, we don't want folks to have to interact with a bunch of different places, forget to enter data one place or, or have to remember all that cognitive load really just isn't useful to actually resolving the incident. So we wanna reduce that as much as possible. Um, and then collecting data. So Mark just talked about how, you know, we're really, really data focused. We think that by tracking data that both the commander inputs as well as we collect automatically, we can drive a lot of uh, really good learnings from these incidents and we can help prevent them in the future. Uh, and then lastly here, I just want to take a moment and say that uh, it really takes a village, right? So we're very uh, like kind of customer focused in the way we approach incidents. We're a very small team um, as far as the number of incidents and the breadth of incidents that we do handle. So we really rely on our partner teams to uh, help us resolve a lot of these, those incidents. Um, and additionally, the automation that we've, we've kind of um, created has the added benefit of offloading some of our instant workload, right? So with this automation, we can basically say, hey, other security team, uh, if you use this automation, we have some reasonable expectation that the incident will be handled in a reasonable manner. And that's helped us a lot with some of those partner teams that can run either incidents very specific to their team uh, or their uh, part of their organization or the very just low level incidents that, um, so we can kind of reserve our uh, cognitive uh, overhead for uh, maybe bigger or more involved incidents. Um, what we've also been able to do is offer this tooling outside of uh, security teams and to other teams within Netflix. So while uh, we developed this for the security use case, it's also, there, there's nothing very security like specific about any of the things Dispatch does. It's really about um, maybe incident management. And we found that there are a lot of other teams within Netflix that find this very, very useful to, to help them run their own um, business type incidents. And so we've been able to uh, help them uh, as well. The added benefit to this is that become more familiar with, with our tooling. And so that if we do need to involve them in security specific incidents, they already know what, what, what the deal is. They're already up to speed um, and it speeds up that process a lot. So there's kind of a mutual beneficial relationship there. And then lastly, uh, it's open source. Uh, go ahead and try it out. Uh, I think it's been open source for a little over a year now. Um, and and, and that's, that's all we have. So thank you very much for, for talking with us today. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you, Olivier, for um, yeah, introducing us.